What's up, Pokemon fans? Professor K here for the Pokemon Evolutionaries, back with another deck profile for you guys. It's Wednesday, so that means it is Deck Profile Wednesday, but not just any deck profile. A third place League Challenge winning deck profile. This was an expanded tournament that we had at our local league here in Spring Hill, Florida, and I decided to run a variation of Excelgore, which did very well, 4 1 and 1 to be exact which did manage to net me these four packs of cards. We got the two Roaring Skies and two Phantom Forces. We're gonna go ahead and open up two of the Phantom Forces now before the deck profile actually begins, just so you guys get a little bit of an opening idea. And then we're gonna save the Roaring Skies, which would be the Hunt for Shaman, for the end of the video after the deck profile. I think that's a good way to balance it out so you guys can uh, get a little bit of an opening and a little bit of a deck profile information. So we're gonna start off here with a Zubat, Wismer, Murkrow, Fletchling, Oh, Helioptile. Let's get that out of here real quick. <laughs> We've got Zwilus, Klefki, Fletchender, a Reverse Hollow Lyperd, and a Spiritomb non hollow Rare. And our other pack of Phantom Forces, the Mega Gengar pack, contains... Let's see what we got here. We've got... Code card to the side. Looks like our first card there was a Venonat. Indeed it is. We got a Venonat, Finneon, Litleo, Gumi, Mana, Sligu, Trick Coin, Lyperd, Luminion Reverse, and we got a Team Flare Jamming, or Team Flare Hyper Gear Jamming Net. Not the one that I would really like to see. I'd like to see Headringer instead, but still really cool to see that. So that's our uh, first two packs here that we got. We'll save the Roaring Skies after the deck profile because that's what you guys are really here for. As I said, I ran a variation of Excelgore, faced a lot of really interesting decks, faced a Manectric, Halucha, and um, what was the other Pokemon that she had in there? Manectric, Halucha, Shaman, and Landorus EX, which actually ended up winning the tournament, believe it or not. But uh, round one, I did take that one down. I faced a Dedene uh, Seismitoad Bats deck. I also faced a Dark deck, which was based, of course, on Darkrai and Evil Tall and uh, Dark Patch. I did manage to win against that as well. And then I also faced, uh, again, the uh, same deck, the Seismitoad Bats Dedene, but we tied for the final round of that one. And I did lose, ultimately, to the opponent that I beat the first round with the Halucha and the Manectric and the Landorus EX. So, did face a lot of the same people, but those are the decks that I went up against, and Excelgore did very well. So, uh, I'm going to show you guys what the deck looks like. Pretty standard of any Excelgore deck, we've got four copies of Shelmet. This is the Shelmet that is from Plasma Blast. I prefer to use this one because, in a pinch, you can use Yawn, making, your defending Pokemon, making the defending Pokemon fall asleep, which is definitely important. Uh, if you can't get an Excelgore out. So four copies of Shelmet is definitely a must for the deck. You do need to get Excelgores out and going as fast as possible and as much as you possibly can as well. So your main attacker for the deck is going to be based around Excelgore. We do have four of them. With that deck and cover attack, this defending Pokemon is now paralyzed and poisoned, does 50 damage. Shuffle this Pokemon and all cards attached to it into your deck. So you're hitting for 50, paralyzed poison, and running back to the deck taking your energy with you. So the idea is to keep running and hiding and dealing damage and paralyzing and poisoning, uh, making your opponent have to play item cards, such as Switch or Escape Rope or even AZ in a Sporter form, Cassius, what have you, uh, in order to get out of that paralyzed state. It's very devastating if you are not prepared for it. And uh, it showed for sure. Uh, oh yeah, there was another deck that I faced as well, which was uh, Weavile. It was a Weavile deck. Uh, Weavile, Eggs, and uh, Lopinese Big Jump did manage to win against that as well, which you'll see why here momentarily. Alone, Excelgore is not something to really be feared, but whoever it's partnered with is really who makes the difference most of the time. Um, Excelgore can run out of energy really fast, and not to mention it is a stage one, so you do have to have one evolved and ready at all times. We do have something that helps that now. Uh, we'll get to that here momentarily, of course. All right, we do have three copies of Mew EX because Versatile allows you to copy the attacks of any Pokemon on the field as long as you have the necessary energy requirements. So if you have an Excelgore on the bench, you can use Mew EX with a double colorless energy attached to it and still use deck and cover for that same 50, paralyzed poison and back into the deck. You do have that psychic typing, which against dark Pokemon, uh, you do have the resistance. So it's not that great against them, but uh, against other psychic types, you are hitting for weakness. So that is one thing that does help. Three copies of Mew EX for that reason gets the job done. Our final partner that really plays a big factor into this is three copies of Wobbuffet. 
by Barricade. As long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, each Pokemon in play, in each player's hand, and in each player's discard pile, has no abilities except for Psychic-type Pokemon. So now you can still use Mew EX's Versatile, but everyone else gets their abilities shut down with Wobbuffet in the active position. So you're going to deck and cover and promote a Wobbuffet into your opponent's turn. So they can't play Shaman, they can't Blastoise, Keldeo, none of that. That shuts down all of those. In my instance, it's also shut down um, the Execute's ability from getting out of the discard pile in the Weavile Eggs deck. Shut that down entirely, couldn't big jump, none of that stuff. So Wobbuffet turns out to be a really, really good partner in this deck and really just creates devastation. More so, to my, in my opinion, than using the trees. Uh, even though you are locking your opponent out of items, they are weak to dark, and Evil Tall is very popular in Expanded. So, I think Wobbuffet is a much better choice. 110 HP, definitely hard to take down, and it is a basic Pokemon as well. Final Pokemon in the deck is one copy of Jirachi EX. Sometimes you need a supporter, and you're just going to have to wish upon a star. With that Stellar Guidance ability, get yourself a supporter card, and there you go. As long as, uh, of course, Wobbuffet's not in the active position. That's the big one. Do not try to play uh, Jirachi if Wobbuffet's in the active position. That definitely does not go well. <laughs> so that's it for the Pokemon lineup. We do have a pretty heavy supporter lineup. We want to burn through the deck. So we've got four copies of Professor Juniper, being able to discard your hand and draw a fresh seven cards. You want to get your deck size down to as minimal as possible because this deck does not ever really deck out. Uh, being able to deck and cover, you're obviously shuffling, shuffling in at least one Mew, one DCE, or you're shuffling in a Shellman, Excelgore, and a DCE every time you attack. So you're never going to run out of cards as long as you have Excel Gords. That's the main thing. So we don't really have to worry about playing our Junipers uh, too non-aggressively. That way we can uh, go through the deck as fast as we want. We do have four copies of N as well because a lot of times you don't want to discard what's in your hand at the same time, especially if you got DCE in there, or you've got Excel Gords but no Shelmets, that kind of thing. So four copies of N, especially early game, really helps you and getting set up. So definitely good there. Really awesome draw supporter. We've got two copies of Lysander. Being able to take out an EX or something that really has a high retreat cost and putting it in the active position and locking it down with that poison and paralyze is really key, especially when you're trying to get yourself set up from uh, turns in the future. So two copies of Lysander. And we also have one copy of Teammates. You'll see why this card makes so much more sense here as we get into our item lineup. But uh, teammates, as long as your uh, one of your Pokemon was knocked out during your opponent's net last turn, you can search your deck for two cards. This is where you're going to get your DCEs if you can't happen to come across them by drawing or using a supporter uh, like Juniper. If you don't want to do that, you can always search yourself out a DCE or whatever else that you might need. So there's one copy of that. When you're playing against Toad, your item locked. You can't use your searching abilities to get Pokemon. So. We do have one copy of Pokemon Fan Club. This is probably interchangeable and disposable. I did use it a couple times, and it did save me in one particular matchup, obviously the Seismitoad, uh, Bats deck. Uh, Pokemon Fan Club, search your deck for two basic Pokemon, reveal them, put them into your hand, shuffle your deck afterwards. Really, really effective in that because it's a supporter that gets out Pokemon. You can't really beat that when you're locked out of your items. And we do also have one copy of AZ. This is the only switching card that we have, so to speak. Uh, if you get a Jirachi in the active position, you can't get out, or a Wobbuffet in the active position, you can't get out. It's no big deal to just play that AZ, especially if you're item locked, to get that out of the active position, put yourself in an Excelgore and a Mew and start hitting again. Um, really could have used this in the tournament. I didn't, and this is an addition that I made after the fact. I did have four Wobbuffet, but this I think is definitely an important uh, card to include into your deck. Also, one copy of Hex Maniac. The only reason why there is a copy of Hex Maniac is because of Aegislash. You can't attack with deck and cover for a double colorless if you can't go through an Aegislash. So you have to do it with an Excel Gore. You can't do it with a Mew because you're shut off a Versatile. Abide Barricade doesn't do any good because it's going to be on the bench and not in the active position. So one copy of Hex Maniac is definitely needed in the deck to get past Aegislash. It's definitely a disposable card in the other matchups. Gives you something to throw away if you need to. But uh, I do think it's important to include one of them, just in case you come across that metal matchup. All right, on to the items now. This is where that team makes makes a lot of sense. Four copies of Robo Substitute. Sometimes setting up an Excel work can be a little difficult. You're going to have to buy yourself some time. So you're going to throw up a Robo Substitute in place of anything else, especially if you don't have a Float Stone on Wobbuffet. And uh, this will buy you some time as long as... 
they don't have a Lysander. Or you're going to make them waste a Lysander in order to deal that damage to an Excelgor, Mew, whatever it else it might be. So four copies of Robo Substitute. Act as a 30 HP Pokemon. Nice little wall for you while you're trying to set up your strategy. We also have four copies of Level Ball. Most of the deck is searchable by Level Ball. Not all of it. Your Shelmets, Excelgors, and your Jirachi are all accessible through Level Ball. You can search your deck for a Pokemon with 90 HP or less, reveal it, and put it into your hand. Shuffle your deck afterwards. I think it's really key to have the four copies of Level Ball in order to keep the flow of Excelgors coming. Uh, once you start putting them back into the deck, they can go pretty quick, and you're going to want to set them up as fast as you can once again. We have three copies of VS Seeker with a high count of Juniper and things like that. Uh, I just think that three is okay. Four probably would be better, but again, it's interchangeable. You can you know, get out the, the fan club if you wanted to. You can drop the Hex Maniac if you really felt so inclined. I think the AZ should stay though, but if you want four, you can always find room for it. I ran three, and to be honest with you, it ran perfectly fine with just the three. We also have three copies of Floatstone for Wobbuffet or Jirachi if need be, being able to get free retreat, going from Wobbuffet in the active position back into an Excelgore and a Mew, and just doing the same strategy over and over. Deck and cover, hide behind a Wobbuffet, deck and cover, hide behind a Wobbuffet, or a Robo if you needed to. So there's that. And you can even attach the Floatstone to the Robo sub if you really, really wanted to, but most people don't, so <laughs> there is that. We also have two copies of Ultra Ball, mainly just because Wobbuffet and Mew EX are not searchable by Level Ball, so this gives you an access to that if you wanted to make sure that uh, you're able to hit with a Mew. Say you've got one Excelgore on the bench, you don't want to waste it for the attack, but you do have an Ultra Ball, you can get yourself a Mew, and at least buy yourself another turn to start setting up more Excelgore for the future. So there is that. Two copies of Enhanced Hammer because Special Energy is rampant, and I mean, obviously it is because we're playing it in this deck. So this is definitely a lifesaver in a few matchups. I was able to discard some strong energies, some double colorless energies. Definitely came in clutch. I would like more hammers, but there's not a whole lot of room in the deck for extra hammers in this. So I may do with what I got. We have two copies of Muscle Band, another card I would have liked to have more of, but as you're shuffling them through the deck, it really isn't such a big deal to only have two especially when you do have your one copy of Silver Bangle as well. You do have three ways to deal extra damage. Um, of course, the Silver Bangle only works on Excelgore. The Muscle Band works on anybody, but you can deal that extra 20 or 30 damage that might get you a knockout, say, on a Seismitoad. You can go 50, 80, 160 for weakness, and then with Verbank City Gym, dealing 190 total damage to a Seismitoad. That's pretty devastating, which is why this deck doesn't fear Seismitoad quite as much as other decks might. So there's your ways of dealing the extra damage. Two copies of Muscle Band, one copy of Silver Bangle. We also have a couple more one-ofs, one copy of Sacred Ash, because sometimes you've got to throw away Shelmets and Excelgors or get them back in some way, shape, or form, or even Muser, whatever you need anyways. Get five Pokemon out of the discard pile, put them back into your deck. Really key, especially if you're losing Pokemon quickly. Our ace spec in the deck is Computer Search. This is a setup deck. Most of the time you're gonna be searching for a DCE or maybe a level ball or whatever the case may be. You can discard two cards, get whatever it is that you might need to make the deck work. We've got three copies of Forest of Giant Plants. This is what makes Excelgore really playable again. Having Forest of Giant Plants gets you Shelmet, Excelgore on the same turn and really keeps the deck flowing really well. It definitely was clutch for me. I do think that Verbank is still very viable. That's why I do include one copy of Verbank for that reason. Uh, a lot of Verbank in Expanded, so I feel like one is enough, and it was enough in my matchups. So that's the stadium lineup I chose. You can run a 2-2 Verbank, Force of Giant Plants if you wanted to, but I like the 3-1 approach better because a lot more times you're going to need an Excelgore than have to worry about that extra damage that you could potentially be doing. And finally, our energy count is just four copies of Double Colorless Energy. A little bit risky in a world where hammers are a thing, but because you're decking covering and putting it back into the deck, a lot of times you're not going to want to attach this on the bench if you don't have to. You're just going to want to attach, attack, hide. That's about it. So I'm not so worried about it. I think 4 DCE is definitely what this deck has to have in order to work. So there is the deck, guys. This was third place finishing Excelgore in an expanded league challenge here in Spring Hill. Did very, very well for me. Uh, I would not change anything about this deck other than what I did here, putting it in AZ, taking out a Wobbuffet. I think now the deck is about as good as you can really hope to get. 
And uh, I mean, you guys may disagree, change it however you will. This is just the build that I like and uh, the skeleton that I went for. So with that being said, let's go ahead and open up the final two packs here of the third place winnings. Very cool that our league organizer does do this. Uh, he does give us packs, plus we get the um, the promo cards that you know show that you won a certain placing in a tournament and you get the pack of energy. And he even gave away tickets to Pokemon Symphonic Evolutions. So that was really awesome. Uh, to the winner though, I didn't get it. <laughs> we got a Halucha. Hey, we got that for N, there we go. We got the Heliops on the Halucha in the same. I'll just do that for him. Wingull, Inkay, Thug Life, Togepi, Execute, Pelipper, Revive, Togetic, Reverse Hollow Binacle, and an Articuno, non-hollow rare. And our final pack is the Mega Rayquaza pack of Roaring Skies, still trying to hunt down more Shaman, as if we haven't had enough already, but hey, whenever you open up Roaring Skies, it's always the hunt for Shaman. All right, so the final pack we have here is a Fletchling, Execute, Talo, Electrike, Bagon, Healing Scarf, Gliscor, Switch, Reverse Hollow Bagon and a Zapdos non-holo rare. So nothing really too big on the packs. We did get that jamming net, which is pretty cool, but that's okay. I'm just happy that I managed to get third place, get some championship points. That is the second tournament now that I've gotten championship points for. So I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I think I have 22 already and I have not been to a regionals because there's none anywhere near me in Florida. So I guess that's not too bad. It's a decent start. We do have cities coming up though, so that's exciting. Hopefully we get to do some of those and um, Stay tuned for more TCG content, guys. Hopefully you liked the video. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts on the deck. And uh, if you guys do run the deck, let me know how you do in your league challenges and tournaments as well. So until next time, guys, I'm Professor K for the Pokemon Evolutionaries, and you have just been given yet another deck profile. Take care.